What if you could have an assistant that's available 24 seven and never takes a break and also makes you more productive? Well, that's what AI can do if you know how to use it. Now, whether you're watching this and you're totally comfortable with all sorts of AI tools or you haven't really gotten into them at all, you'll be able to take something away from this video because I'll talk about AI in three uses for managers at work, for non-managers at work, and also for anyone for tips in life outside of work. Now, in this video, I'll really focus it on ChatGPT in particular. ChatGPT is just one of many, many AI tools. You may see things like uh, Microsoft Copilot, Gemini, Claude. There's new ones literally seemingly being created every day. But I'll focus in this video on ChatGPT because it's one of the ones that's known most widely, it can be free to use, and it can be a great place to start if you're just trying to get your hands around it. Now also, as an intro, I always like to say that ChatGPT and virtually any AI tool are not a diary nor an encyclopedia. And what I mean by that is not a diary in that it's not private. So when you put things in, it doesn't mean that it's not possible for others to see it. A lot of these tools, including ChatGPT, use what's put into it to train and to consistently get better. Now, it often also depends on your comfort with that. A lot of times it can help because everyone's benefiting from other people putting information in, but it's important to recognize different things, like both from a common sense perspective of like if you're a manager, not using someone's name, not putting your company's name in there or any type of identifying information, but also using your company or organization's policies. If you're ever doing anything like that for work, it's incredibly important to follow those at all. Some organizations have them, many don't. And so I generally say just having those things to keep in mind of not putting things in there like people's names or companies' names or things like that that are identifiable. And in this video, we'll talk really about general tips. So it's not going to be about, you know, input this type of sensitive file. It's more about general things that you can do at work and in life. Now, I also said it's not an encyclopedia, and you may have now have seen some of these news articles of like lawyers relying on cases by ChatGPT that they find out after the fact weren't actually cases at all. And so just because ChatGPT says it does not mean that it's an actual fact. But also in this video, we won't be talking about things like using ChatGPT to research information, but just know that, that when it's putting things out, that it's important to always verify, especially if you're ever doing anything like a, like a legal case where you have to verify it against to make sure it's a, it's a real thing. But knowing just because it says a fact doesn't mean that it's necessarily true. And so just to keep those things in mind. And so with those rules, I'll start talking about managers. Now, first, if you've used ChatGPT, then great. You can go ahead and skip ahead like maybe 15 seconds or so. But if you haven't, that's okay as well. Because when I lead um, like manager training sessions or things like that, constantly I'll ask who's used ChatGPT or who's used AI tools. And it's definitely increasing, but so many people, including people in senior leadership or all sorts of people, really haven't tried it at all. And so it's important to tell you how to use it. So you can go to literally chatgpt.com. You can just have a free account or just use it for free. You can also create an account and they have paid ones and there's some benefits of like it's speedier, you can have more requests, things like that. But for a lot of people, especially as you're starting using it, just using a free ChatGPT is fine. And so when you use it, there's a prompt button at the bottom and you can ask questions or you can say things. Now, a lot of things to know about ChatGPT is now a current topic is do you say please and thank you just in case and how much energy or things like that does that use? But just knowing that when you're typing things in, ChatGPT often doesn't look at typos. It doesn't necessarily ask you to use them, please and thank you. Personally, I do use those. But just knowing things like that, it tends to really quickly get a sense of what you're looking for whenever you're asking it questions. And so that's just a way to use your bearings. And so when I talk about ChatGPT, I'll talk about prompts. And what prompts are is just putting something in, like a request in. So in this video, in the blog that'll accompany it, that'll have examples of those, that's where you would put information into ChatGPT and it generates an answer. Now, as a manager, one of the things that I really like is using ChatGPT for things like, how do I do and say this? And what I mean by that is, again, not using people's specific information, but so often when I talk to managers about, you know, what find, things do you find challenging? Often it's talking to people with different personalities and things like that. And so, for example, if you're giving someone performance feedback, then 
rarely do managers have manager training. Yes, I provide manager training, so I like actually providing real training and no, no ChatGPT answer is gonna be a substitute for manager training. But in case you don't have a budget, just knowing, typing something in, like how would I give feedback on you know, a typo and saying to someone that's a newer employee or someone that's more experienced. And it's a balance between, again, not putting any confidential information in, but generally when you can put things in, like if you're um, an account management team, so saying this is account management in the tech industry, that can be helpful, again, without giving confidential information, but to give some context and use some language. And so saying, how would I give this feedback to a newer employee? How might I give it to an experienced employee that hasn't really had issues like this before? And so these type of prompts can help you to think about how you actually give feedback to employees. And that can be a great way because even though ChatGPT, again, you never want to have ChatGPT generate something and just read it verbatim to an employee. What I say is, as a manager, you're often thinking about, okay, how can I say this or do this? And it can help to edit something that somebody else creates for you rather than trying to start it from scratch. Another is, frequently you may have like team meetings or be involved in helping to coordinate different team meetings. And sometimes it's the same old, same old. Like someone says, does anybody have an icebreaker? Like, okay, you can only have so many fun facts that as a manager, I can tell you most people don't find them as, as fun and you may feel that way as well. But what you can have is say something in a chat GPT to say, we're gonna have this meeting with cross-functional teams. What are things that we can do that can blend personal and professional getting to know each other? And oftentimes it can generate some ideas like that of things that you can do in different ways of thinking that in a spot you can absolutely do it. Or even if you have an existing team meeting and you think to yourself like, okay, this isn't as great as it's been. Putting in a prompt of, okay, what can I do to have a new activity that's five minutes long that can help my team on X, Y, Z, like insert some general topic. Or you can have 15 minutes or time lengths like that. And it can often give you those ideas to help you not just have feedback conversations, but also think of how you're structuring those events with your teams. Another that I commonly hear is about performance reviews. And I hear people frequently that'll say, performance reviews coming up, I guess, I guess I'll just use ChatGPT or other people say, how would you use that? And the one thing that I have to keep in mind is to make sure that you're still bringing your manager approach to those, that people still want very much to be, to be led, I wouldn't say managed, but led by a person, not just a chat GPT. And so I think it's great to leverage technology like that of like, okay, rephrase this, or how could I say this more efficiently? But making sure that you're still putting the human touch behind those. And so some things you can do, for example, are just listing general things people have done well, and then making a list of those and having those in a chat GPT. Again, making sure that it's not having those specifics that are identifiable, but different things like they presented to a senior team and that really went well, or you know, they missed a deadline. I had to follow up four times with them, thinking about how you can phrase those things, or even asking a chat GPT, how can I think about performance reviews for my team? Um, what are helpful things for me to do now? And what are helpful things for me to do through the year so that it's not such a scramble? Some of those general tips can be really great in the moment. So these are tips I'll include here and in the blog, which is at managermethod.com slash blog, you can see a blog will have even more prompts that you can use. And a lot of this is just generating ideas that can just be easier to help you always having to create things from scratch, but being able to use your human ideas to put information in and also using your human manager brain to take whatever information ChatGPT gives you and really translate that in a way that works for your team. But oftentimes when I've introduced ChatGPT or literally sat with someone and like, you can do these things, it can just help so tremendously. And people are surprised at how quickly it can get a sense of your voice and, and figuring things out and, and really make you more efficient. So for non-managers, because a lot of what I do is manager training. I do manager training on the fundamentals, leveraging my background from legal and HR. I also work with employees to do broader employee trainings to help things like communication at work. So just like ChatGPT can be helpful for managers, there are plenty of benefits for employees that aren't managing a team to use it to help you be more effective at work. Because your organization, if I'm to ask you, like, what's your career path? Again, you may be able to articulate that well. You would probably be in the very, very small minority of organizations because plenty often it's not really necessarily clear. And you may think you know, but you may not have a sense of even what you want to do. And so using ChatGPT to even have a prompt to say, 
how can I think about my potential career path? And again, having your general role. And so you can type that in again without having a, the name of it or the title, if that's really specific to your, to your actual company. But to think about that, and so you can start thinking and, and using ChatGPT almost as a uh, as a career assistant. I wouldn't say a career coach because there are plenty that can sit with you and talk about things more in depth, but a lot of people don't really have budget for that. And so even using it to bounce different ideas off of, how can I think about my career path? How can I think about what I really enjoy doing at work? And so that can help you, to, and it's really a conversation back and forth, and it can help you as a mirror almost back and forth. And so with that, when you think about, okay, this is what I want to do, how do I have that conversation with my manager? It, some people may have a great relationship with their manager. Even in that instance, you may not know how to actually bring it up effectively. And so some of those follow-up questions of, okay, then how can I bring that up to my manager to reinforce I want to grow my career here? And depending on what that relationship looks like, you may worry, okay, well, what if my manager's afraid I just want to take their job? Adding that in as a prompt to say, you know, to reinforce, I want to help them grow as well and, and all of those things. And just referencing those really human emotions that some managers may have. And so that's how you can use prompts as well to think back and forth in that conversation and think about how you phrase things. Because again, just like for managers, your human thought is what matters. And so ChatGPT and no other AI tool can come up with your exact voice and, and you don't need to sound like anyone else. But looking at it and some of the talking points it'll generate and thinking about how to do that, because it can also likely help you not only have talking points for those conversations, but also thinking about how you phrase those. So other things like if you have conflict with a colleague or all those type of topics that you have day in and day out, that can be a prompt as well of, you know, what if I had a disagreement with a colleague about a project and I don't know how to address it now? Again, it can give you some ideas of how to approach that conversation and things that you can add to say, whether we haven't worked together long or we've worked together for a long time, it can add those details. And so it can have a really more tailored response that can, you can use that for some of those talking points. And so th some of those things can really help you to really not just grow your career, but think really specifically about what you're looking for and then how to do that. So those are just some of the ways. And again, I'll have more prompts in the blog post as well. But another topic that I love talking about is for no matter what your role is, using something like a ChatGPT to help you be more efficient in life as well as work. Because a lot of times people talk about things like work-life balance, which is probably a topic for another video, but inevitably there are times that you have things going on at work and whatever's going on in your life, it can seem like there's never enough time. And so some of what ChatGPT can be helpful for. For example, I can, what I did recently, literally, was I and another friend were at a weekend, a big weekend event. It was out of town and a friend was throwing a celebration. So we were all there. We actually had another friend who was going to throw an event at that same venue just a couple months later. And they'd said like, okay, make sure to take pictures and take notes for, for me all weekend for different ideas. Well, we had a very, very, very long chat as sometimes you have in a group text. And so at the end, I had you know, I don't know how many pages, it was probably 20 pages of text for the weekend. And some of it was about the event, like some friend group chats, there were some completely other details, like trips and travel and, you know, whatever. And so my friend said, Oh, great, I'm going to go through all these and, you know, put notes together. And so I had an idea. So I went to ChatGPT. At first, I looked through to make sure there was no confidential information whatsoever, even amongst friends. But I just took all of those screenshots and just uploaded them. At the time, I think it was a limit of 10 screenshots at a time. But I uploaded those and put it together and said, can you please create a note for my friend to send to her event planner, organize these, and please ignore any talk of like other travel or general chit chat. Really quickly, ChatGPT generated, I sent it to my friend, this literal template beautifully organized that required almost no adjustment whatsoever. My friend's response was like, what, what angel sent you this? And I had to say like, well, that's kind of embarrassing. It's just ChatGPT. But... It's a tool that can really help in those instances to make you more efficient rather than going through and trying to pick out those details. And so similar things. Another time recently, I have, uh, I'm, I'm a mom and so one of my, my kids was at the urgent care, it all turned out to be relatively fine, but we were sitting there waiting for like 10 minutes for you know your typical virus tests or whatever. And we were so tired from lack of sleep the night before. 
And, you know, I didn't want to sit there and scroll on my phone and would talk to my child, but I thought, hmm. So I said, what if I go to ChatGPT and have it create a story? So I ended up putting in different details, like we live in the land, so let's talk about the Braves, you know, different stuffed animals, some different activities. And I said, can you just put together like a five minute story? And it did, it created a personalized story that was hilarious. It kind of reminded me of those that I did back in the mall in the 80s and 90s that was watching that are n not part of that. You may not know this, but they used to have these things in the mall where you can make these personalized books. I'm sure people do it now in a much easier way, but you wait to have them made. But it was almost like that, of like a very personalized story. And so some of those things that can help you be more efficient in the moment and have some of those things that, that can help. Other things that now I've heard from friends are going along to doctor's appointments, for example, where um, you can type in different, different notes and come up with a medication schedule or things like that. Again, important to, of course, make sure that that's matched up against what the doctor's looking for, but to have things to keep track. That's why some of the, addition, in addition to ChatGPT, some of the other tools that you can have for like recording devices or things like that that you bring along with you and, um, and have those in, for example, a medical appointment to make sure that you're capturing everything if the healthcare provider's fine with it. But those things can help you to summarize and come up with those treatment plans really efficiently. Because I know a lot of people at times are in that sandwich generation where you may be trying to take care of uh, younger family members, people in your life, also parents, and just trying to be in between and finding some of those tricks. So in addition to those, things like recipes, um, ideas, meal planning, all of those things. The last that I've seen people talk about is, and it's one of now one of the top uses of ChatGPT, is using it for things like emotional support. Now, I'm super cautious on this because, again, ChatGPT, again, as I said, it's not a diary, it's not an encyclopedia, so it's not 100% confidential just to you, and it's also not you know, fact-specific, and it's also, of course, not a licensed therapist. But in the moment, more and more when people have things and they're talking to it, it can help in a pinch to say, you know, I'm feeling this way right now, and just getting some ideas in a moment. It's not a replacement for medical, mental health care, or real, genuine human friendship, which is so important. But it's really amazing the moment, even if like you're nervous before a presentation and just saying to ChatGPT, I'm feeling nervous. Can you help give me a pep talk? I had a friend that recently I was like, OK, I have things to say. And I said, if you need something else, do that. And afterwards, she'd said like ChatGPT, she screenshot what it sent to me. And it was it's it's just in a pinch. It can really help you out. So whether you're at work and you're having a presentation or something else in life. So overall, I hope these tips are helpful. And again, if you go to the managermethod.com blog, I'll have more. And even I have a newsletter. I'll have that in the description where you can get a, a bonus tip every week um, where generally I give manager tips or work tips, uh, but you can also get a bonus tip in that. So I'll have additional prompts in there as well. But I just think overall, again, ChatGPT is not a replacement for, for people, for thinking, for, for real human engagement but it absolutely can help you be more efficient. And so understanding some of these ways and generally as you start getting into using ChatGPT for these tricks, it can help you in other ways. So you think about different prompts to use and build on those and even sharing those with colleagues. And so in the blog in particular, I'll include language to talk about in team meetings, like what are ways that are people using AI for that are helpful. And so I found it really helpful. You can probably hear it from me. I'm also a LinkedIn learning instructor. And so I actually have courses uh, on AI. So I'll link those in the description as well. And overall, I just think learning about these and even if you've never used it before, finding ways to use it to make you more efficient and just have kind of a second thought or a second opinion can be so helpful rather than being afraid or intimidated by it or trying to use that as a replacement for everything else because it's not. Your human voice and thought are still very much needed, but it can be so helpful in a pitch.